Hey guys, thank you for coming in. Happy Tuesday. Glad to have you here tonight. Thanks replay viewers for watching and thanks YouTube viewers for watching as well. We are working on the hourglass block quilt. We have one border on here. Uh, it's time to get the top and bottom borders on tonight. But there we are. It is coming together. We are getting it done here. Uh, and I just want to remind you guys that this will be up for a giveaway. Uh, once it's all finished, I'm going to give it away to one of uh, my newsletter readers. And uh, so to sign up uh, to, to get an entry, just uh, click the link that I have in the posting here uh, for the giveaway. Sign up there and you will be entered to win this quilt. We will be making the announcement in the Penguin and Fish Crafters page on, on Facebook, so be sure to do a search for that and join there as well. That's where we'll announce it. And I don't have a date for that yet. It will be when we are finished with the quilt and after I take a, a photo of, or two of it so I can remember it since, since I'll be giving it away. But that is the plan for this quilt. It is our super shiny quilt. I made it out of six fat quarters that were all sparkly. I think this is my favorite, this one here. This green, so shimmery. It's all shimmery. Some, some of it's more glittery, like this one, this blue has got sparkles in it. But I, I'm having such a good time stitching with it. I haven't used uh, shiny, sparkly fabric before, so it's fun. So, all right guys, I uh, am going to put on the other two borders tonight, the top and the bottom border, and we will have this top done by the end of the evening. I'm so excited to be this far on it. Uh, if you guys are new here, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. I'm the author of Sew and Stitch Embroidery, and I'm here every night at 9.30 p.m. Central, uh, relaxing and chatting and sewing with you guys. But it looks like we might be a little, the uh, stream might be a little funny tonight, but uh, we're gonna just keep going here. I know it, it works for about half the people sometimes and then half not, we'll see how we do tonight. So thanks again for joining guys. Uh, we'll get going. I, we did the measurements last night, so it should go pretty quick tonight. So I'm gonna flip you guys around and we will get going. Oh, you're in Minneapolis right now. That is awesome. I hope you're having fun, Ashley. All right, flipping you guys around. Oop, there we go. Okay. See, so it's fine for a few of you. Yeah, I don't know. It's so weird. I think it's a. It's got to be a Facebook thing. We've tested it so many ways on all of our ends, and I think you know the only variable yet is Facebook itself. It seems. So all right, here's the math. For, we're, we're doing the top and the bottom borders tonight, and we've already figured out that we need uh, 48 and a half inches for that. So earlier tonight, I actually measured the actual top all the way across just to see, just to double check that we are at 48 and a half inches, and it is. So we're still, we're still fine on this measurement. So what I'm going to do is we cut our pieces a little bit larger than we needed to last night. Uh, it's folded on this edge. This is um, an eight and a half inch cut because our border will end up being eight inches. So that allows the seam allowance. Uh, there's a fold on this side and then the edges here. All I have to do is trim this so that this ends up being 24 and a quarter inch because then when I unfold it, we'll have our 48 and a half. So luckily my ruler is just long enough or not my ruler, my uh, cutting mat. So I'm going to put the fold on the line at the end over here, and then I'm gonna align it along, align my nice cut edge here along the straight edge of, you know, one of these inch markings on here. So, all right, the fold is good. And this is actually two, two layers of fabric. So this will end up being both our top and bottom border. All right, so we got that. So now we just need to cut that uh, quarter inch here. So my whole board is 24 inches and then I just need to add that quarter inch and we should have our 48 and a half. 
I got so much help from from you guys last night, and and I sure appreciate it a ton. We got that border all figured out, and uh, now we get to finish this border tonight too. I'm excited. All right, so we're ready. This is our two our two pieces. We can unfold this. So that's one border, and then since we did two layers. We got both our borders here. So, all right, I'm gonna set one to the side for now. And actually, I'm gonna set them both to the side. Let's get, get this guy situated again. Okay. So, it's getting bigger and bigger on my tiny table. So, we need to find the center of this again. And it should be four blocks in because there's eight blocks total. But what I'm going to do just to make sure is I'm going to match up, match up the edges here. Just really fold it in half. And yeah, we can, we can count this as the center here. Okay. Center point, four blocks in. So what I didn't do before I unfolded this Oh, it does kind of have a fold, but let's let's make sure that we center this as well, our border. So I'm gonna match up those ends again here. Yeah, it seems to be working for some of you guys tonight and some not. I think the replay will be fine. And again, the replay for all of these will also be on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. So you can check it out there afterwards as well. All right, I'm gonna just put a little marking here, just kind of uh, scoring it with my fingernail. So that's the center of the border. So now I wanna line up that center with the center of this fabric. And I'm actually gonna just pin it once and I'm gonna flip this around because I want, I want my quilt to be my quilt front to be on, on top. So I'm gonna just do one clip. I'm using wonder clips instead of pins. I just really like them and I find pins annoying. So uh, that's my new favorite tool is these wonder clips. All right, we got that center point. So I'm gonna flip this around now. So we have this side on top, get this all flat. All right, so We've pinned the center. I'm gonna pin the end. Getting bulky over here. I'm gonna pin the end. Line those up. Not pin, I'm gonna wonder clip the end. Now I'm going to start dividing, dividing that area in half. So you can see up there is my center clip and I have the bottom one down here. I'm going to find kind of a general center. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just want to make sure everything's flat here, make sure it's lined up. I'm just going to kind of scratch it in place so I can see both lines and we'll just throw a wonder clip kind of right in the center of the other two. And then I'm gonna just keep centering, or just keep uh, keep adding. And I'm gonna also do a lot because our triangles in the hourglass block, these are cut on the bias, which is the 45 degree angle of the fabric. So that's the stretchiest part of the fabric. So I just need I need more clips in here to hold it all steady. Oh, the, the clipping is pretty important for this. All right, got the bottom area. Let's scooch up. Now we'll go in between uh, our center clip here and this clip. Again, kind of scratching it all in place. to move around now that we have all this bulk that we're dealing with. All right, one 
more. And then we'll move up to the other edge. We've done the bottom edge now. Okay, so now here's our center one again from before. Now I need to, I'm gonna go sideways just because I think it'll be easier for me. Oh, maybe not. I'm trying to coordinate my space here a little bit. So I'm gonna go up to the top here. And you know what, actually I'm gonna roll this up a little bit and I'm gonna line up these tops. Since we've already measured, I know that my measurements should be uh, in the right spot. So I'm just gonna match those corners. Throw a wonder clip on there. And now I can spread it out so it's flat and then do my find my kind of center area here. So about about right there. Okay. So again, I'm gonna fill in this little area. Oh man, Carol, I am with you. These wonder clips have been awesome. And I'm really liking these mini wonder clips. So this is a this is a normal size wonder clip. And this is the mini wonder clips. And these are great because you can get closer with the sewing machine. Uh, they have that tapered edge, which is nice. And they're just, and they're just as strong. I mean, these aren't going anywhere once they're clipped. A few more in here. And we are almost ready to sew. Some of you guys are frozen tonight. All right, from there to the top, we'll start kind of centering it. We'll go right here. Hold that. Throw a few more in here. Again, I'm kind of over clipping it just because of the stretchiness of these triangles. But I think better safe than sorry here. Okay, one more, and that will do it right up top here. Okay, so now we have this whole edge clipped. So it's time to sew that border on. Move my clips out of the way here. Let's get to the sewing machine. They actually have really big wonder clips too that you can use for binding a quilt. I've, I've never used those before. Those might be fun to get to, get, get the whole range of them. All right, let's sew this guy on. I'm also gonna get my little stiletto out. That's been helpful for uh, helping guide things through the machine a bit. There, I think you guys can see a little bit better now. Okay. So I have my, my business card here is at the, uh, it's marking my quarter inch so I can just butt up my fabric right against that and it's got a physical barrier because this is a little thick physical barrier to stop uh, the fabric, get it all lined up. Oh yeah, we had a lot of trouble last night. I broke a needle last night, so we're using a thicker needle now. I don't need a, a thick needle really for just going through fabric like this, but uh, with these hourglass blocks, there are, on some of them there's a lot of bulk at, at uh, the points of the, of the triangles. And that's what I'm trying to avoid is uh, the needle going through that. Oh my gosh, 87 by you. We've, it's been a little cooler here. It's like that perfect, it's kind of like fall weather actually, but with that hint of summer in there yet, it's kind of perfect. I actually threw a light jacket on when I went for a walk tonight. I didn't need it, I took it off after a while, but it was comfy to have it on. Yeah, so I'm just using my stiletto to help the fabric through 
some of these difficult corners. Oh, so did you guys get my my last couple emails? I just sent out a few emails uh, today and yesterday, kind of telling you what our new. Uh, I'm gonna do start doing a designer series here in the evening, uh, starting early July, and our first uh, project is the. Travel Art Folio uh, by Patty Young of Mod Kid. And she has some really cute kits for the project that you can get on her website right now. And uh, just for a, a really limited time, uh, they're only available till the 29th. And kind of until supplies last as well. Uh, there's a limited supply of the, the fabrics. So uh, if you want to check those out, to sew with us in July. We're gonna do it live, just like how we're doing this. Um, you, should, you should check out the post on that. You can just go to my Facebook and I'll have a link, a link to the shop there. Oh good, you got it, that's awesome, Lena. Yep, I'm super excited for some of the projects we have coming up. We're almost done with this. Uh, we will work on the Splendid Sampler quilting a little bit, and then in July, after Independence Day, we will start up this designer series. And we'll also be doing some more penguin and fish embroideries as well. So there'll be lots more sewing, lots of embroidery coming up. So I haven't talked about any of the embroidery projects yet, so I'll have some info on that as well. But yeah, I've teamed up with a few other designers. Um, and by team up, I mean they've let me, <laughs> they're letting me do their project live here, which is just super duper nice of them. And uh, they've given me the okay. And we will work on their projects here. And they're really fun too. We're starting out with some just light sewing because we've been doing all these quilts lately. And then we'll do a few more quilts and then plus some embroidery. But anyway, that's some of the things that we will be doing next here. I don't know, the more of these quilts though that I'm that I make, the more I wanna do though. So that's that's kind of neat. I thought I'd uh, I'm do I did this quilt because I thought it'd be nice and fast and kind of I'd get a fast quilt out of my system because we, we've been working on the Splendid Sampler and that was kind of a long-term project that was over a year and a half of working on that. So I'm like, oh man, I just need to do a fast quilt and, and that's kind of what this, this project is. And I thought I'd get it out of my system, the quilts, but man, it's just it just makes me want to make more and more and more of them. <laughs> so that plan didn't quite work, but in a good way. I don't want to be sick of doing quilts. All right. We are almost to the end here. I'm almost to the border, the other border that we did yesterday. Hey, Carol. Oh, Charlie Ann, good. You're looking forward to the projects. That's good to hear. So am I. All right. Into the border we go. We are almost to the end. One more wonder clip and we got her. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side uh, now and uh, that will be the last border, then we'll be done with the top at that point. Ooh, I need an ender here. There we go. Let's snip that. All right. Snip the other side as well. That's the top. 
or the bottom, one or the other. <laughs> All right, I just want to peek at it. I always got to peek at it. Oh, it's so fun to see in a corner. That's when it starts looking finished, doesn't it? We got it all framed up here. I think this green it looks super good with, with uh, the fabrics. This is not my usual usual color palette. Not that I even really have a usual color palette, uh, but I don't know, this feels this feels like a stretch for me working with these fabrics. I'm having a lot of fun, a lot of fun with it. So all right, yeah, I think I think these are working together. I mean it really is very close to this this green color. But cool, there we are. So let's flip it around, rotate it around. I'll get you guys looking over this way again. My little table in my kitchen here. And let's do the other side. Getting bigger and bigger here. What do we say this is gonna end up? Uh, 48 and a half by what, 36? And eight and by like 56, I think, or no, 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 52 or something. You said, I don't know, that requires math. All right, I'm gonna just assume that this center, like the four up and the four down, I'm gonna just assume that that's our center again, kind of like how we did before. Probably shouldn't assume, but I'm gonna. All right, let's find the center of, of this again, our other border piece. And we will clip this and then press and, well, sew first, obviously. We'll clip, press, then sew. And we will have a finished top. All right, I'm gonna just kind of crease, crease this edge again. All right. Match up that center point with center fabric here. Get our wonder clips here again. Again, I'm going to just mark it kind of upside down in the center here and I'll, I'll flip it around again so we can sew with with uh, this guy on top. There's more going on here so it's nice to see see that, have that at the top. All right, let's get this bottom and then I'll worry about laying it flat. Large and awkward at this stage. All this fabric flopping around. Okay. Clip. All right. Now we can lay this out flat from the from the center down at least. Kitty scratch it all in place. <laughs> I call it. Kitty scratching, you're just kind of scratching the top of the fabric to move it like super slightly instead of lifting up the fabric and moving it. Like I don't want to lift up this fabric and try and line it up with the fabric underneath. That's too difficult. So if you just scratch the top forward or wherever it needs to go, um, you can get it in place that way. And I don't know, I call that kitty scratching. Like you're scratching, scratching the top of the head of a little kitty cat. All right, clip to the center here. Oops, not on the both fabrics. There we go, and now we'll even out these areas again. By even out, I'll just, uh, what I mean is I'll center it again, and then fill in the area with clips. I keep grabbing these, these large ones. I have another case of these that are all the, the um, normal size wonder clips. But they didn't all fit, so I had to put a few in my mini Wonder Clips container. Let's see, keep grabbing the big ones. Clip, 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 clip. This is the last seam of the top. That's exciting. All right, moving in. Up this way. Can you scratch it a little? 
center it again and then add a few more clips. tricky here we'll see okay got the bottom half done now let's let's line up those edges on the top again and then we'll then we'll lay it flat okay there we go Laying it flat from the center to the top. There we go. I don't want anything to be stretching or pulling. I think that's that'll do. Let's put these making progress. That's right. We are almost done with the top here. So we'll press it. That'll take a little bit of time. Uh, I think we might just end it uh, when I'm done pressing and uh, leave it up till tomorrow to figure out the backing. We need to cut the back and we need to cut the rest of the binding. And I just, I'm slightly nervous about doing math this late. <laughs> so I think, I think we better wait for tomorrow for that, but we will have the whole top done tonight. And then tomorrow, Wednesday, we will, we will cut and sew the back and the binding and maybe even prep the binding. By prep, I mean we have to fold the binding in half and. And get that all ready. So we'll be we'll have a lot, lot done. Ooh, that means by uh, by Thursday we might be ready to sandwich this quilt together. We'll have to see by Friday at least for sure. Which means next week will be a, a week of quilting on this guy. It might not take a week. We'll see. I have no idea. Hey Felicia, thanks for joining. All right, two more one clips and we can sew. All right, I just threw that my, I just keeping my wonder clips here so I can toss them. I can toss them back in here right away. That's what that's all about. Okay, back to sewing. Just get you guys set up. All right, here we go. Almost done, we're almost done. That's exciting. All right. You know, I still have to pay attention to make sure I'm, I'm sewing in a straight line. And it, it does get a little more difficult for me, at least at this point, because you have so much bulk. Like not only am I dealing with sewing a straight line, I'm dealing with this pile of fabric next to me that I have to keep, keep moving. And actually, let me shoot that around now. It's kind of awkward from before. There we go. Have it kind of gathered over here. When I quilt, I might actually put a side table over here because then I can lay the fabric on the side table like a like a TV tray. Then it's not hanging over the table and, and uh, having a lot of weight, you know, gravity. <laughs> gravity makes us want to go on the floor. Get my stiletto working for me here. So because these triangles are stretchy, I am trying to just guide them in here. You have your husband's office chair or a folding table. Oh, a folding table 
if the quilt is big. Oh, that's a good idea. Yes, I will use a walking foot when I when I quilt. So I will switch over to the walking foot. Uh, this is what a walking foot. I'll switch over to this guy. Uh, what this guy does is it has, you know, there underneath here. There's there's little feet that pull the lung, and this has feet on the top as well. These little guys. So it'll pull. It'll help pull all the layers, the layers along. With at this point, I still want. I don't want the feet on the top because it just slides underneath here because I, I need to help ease and, and guide it a little bit more like I might I might want uh, because this is so stretchy I, I, I want it to, to have the flexibility of being able to move around a little bit more. So I'm not using the walking foot to like quilt but I will I will be using it for the quilting. I'll also be switching needles to a top stitching needle. Uh, I need a needle large enough uh, to fit that metallic floss because I'm, oh, do I have it near me? Oh yeah. So I'm going to be, I want to stitch, I want to quilt with this metallic floss, which might be a nightmare. I've heard it's, it's pretty difficult to work with. Uh, so there are some tips that I read from other people on how to, how to work with it. So we'll do, We'll do a little test. We'll start on a small area of the quilt and and uh, play around with it a little bit. See how it goes. This quilt is, is an excuse for me to give it a try. That's what I like with my crafts uh, when I can practice and learn new things with them. So that's definitely what this is. A whole pile of new stuff with, with this quilt for me. The sparkly, sparkly fabric, sparkly floss. Uh, we did the borders, we cut those on the length of the fabric instead of the width. I don't think I've done that before. That was kind of fun to do yesterday. The hourglass block itself, haven't made those like this before. A pile of learning, a new color, color scheme that I, you know, is new to me. That's always fun. That's how you discover like whole new worlds of color that you didn't know you liked. Lots of clips here, but that's good. You know, I'm considering getting one of those tables. Uh, what are those called? Those plastic tables that you can get built for especially for your machine so it slides in so the whole entire thing is lifted those plastic covers i guess that extend table extenders cover extenders something like that surface extenders i don't know uh well i'm sure you've seen them on machines before where they have this big see-through table that fits right into the machine i don't know i think i need to invest in one of those my birthday's coming up. Maybe I need to get one for that. But that'd be helpful for quilting because then you have everything on a level surface. I don't know. That's what I'm learning at least. I, I'm doing some research on quilting because I'd like to do some free motion quilting. I'd like to learn how to do that since I know nothing about that and everyone does such beautiful free motion quilting work and I'd like to give that a go. Oh you have one you like it? Oh that's that's good to know Nancy. But yeah one of the projects that we're gonna do for the designer series it's a quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts and I have one of her patterns we're gonna do her chevron pattern. I actually have my fabric picked out already I'm super excited for it. Uh, but she wrote a book. Oh, I, I don't know if I know the book offhand, but it's a it's a how to machine quilt book basically. So free motion and with the walking foot. But I'm gonna use her book to help me learn to free motion quilt uh, while while we work on her project live. So that's that's one of my main goals with her project. Oh, see, now here we're running into some bubbly stuff happening. Uh, but I want to 
I want to do some free motion quilting on, on this machine, which might be a complete nightmare. It might not, but we'll see. But she recommends getting your machine so it's on a flat surface. Like, you know, if it goes into the table, which I don't, I don't have, I don't have something that does that, but, um, or getting one of those extenders. So you're working on a flat surface, which I'm definitely not doing right now. And up high, and this has a funny angle here too. So none of the, nothing with this machine is a flat surface, which can be annoying. All right, we are almost done, almost to the border here. So we'll get the ironing board out next and uh, give this a press. And then we'll be ready to do the cut the borders and the bindings tomorrow. A top will be done, done, done. That's pretty cool. Which means I have three quilts currently happening with tops done and nothing else. Or like sandwiched together and, and not done. Basically three in progress quilts that are this far. I have my splint sampler that I have to quilt yet. And then I'm working on my jean quilt. My quilt that's made all out of jeans. And then this guy, I don't know. Not sure how I feel about that racking up unfinished quilts. But we're getting them done. We're still working on them. Okay, that's that. I'm going to quickly, uh, oh man, I was going to say I'm going to quickly close this up so I don't spill them all, and then of course I spill them all. Well, actually, luckily they don't have to go real far. So now I'm going to close this up so I don't spill it an additional time. There we go. And I got a little, it's got a magnet on the back. I can just put it on, I have my little wall over here that I can magnet it to. I'll just show you guys quick. There we go. I got these little things from Ikea. So this just little magnet on there and a little tray, a few things right there for me. So, okay, let's give this a press. You did something like that once in a big quilt, said the machine of the folding curtain table. Oh, yeah, so you got, so the folding table was a couple inches lower. Oh, well, that's interesting. Huh, well, that would be cool. Yeah, the trick is you want, you want your quilt, you want your quilt level with the machine so that when you move it around, it's a whole lot easier. You're not, like, falling off. All right, I'm going to get my ironing board a little closer here. The machine can shimmy away for a little. We are done with him. Okay, let's see how we do with pressing. It's always a little kind of difficult pressing on my tiny little ironing board here, but we'll give it a go. Okay. Got one side here. So I'm going to give it, give the whole length just a quick press. Kind of set the scene first. I think my machine has to wake up a hair too here. My iron. Yeah, now it's warm enough. Almost. All right, shimmy it down. Little by little. Okay, last little bit, then we'll go back and press it. Uh, press it. 
Luckily, this is still a small quilt. I'm not really moving around all that much. All right, I'm going to start it kind of low on the ironing board so I can compress the fabric as well. I'm just opening it, pressing it outward. This is where we can start to see it all. It's a real quilt top. Oh, I love that. I love when you can see the corner there. Man, I'm sweating over this iron. Maybe it's warmer than I thought in here. Sheesh. Summer and ironing doesn't always go together, do they? All right, and I think two more bits and we'll be Oh, and we got the other side to do that too. So we'll do that. I don't want to give this side a, a press to, to just press. We, we didn't actually press the, the border yet. So I'll just go through it vertically quick and press it. Here's the last little end though. Okay, it's looking pretty fun. Okay. I'm going to just go over this border really quickly here. And then, then we'll turn it around and do the other side. A few little puzzles in there we'll have to snip, but we'll snip them later. Whoa, sorry guys, I totally punched you in the face. All right, moving along. Give the whole border another little press. Where did you f purchase the fabric? I got it at this place in town called SR Harris. It's kind of like an overstock, crazy giant warehouse. It is totally wackadoodle there. Um, you can go, oh, like srharrisoutlet.com, I think is what it's called, but it's worth checking out. It is so bizarre. It's like two story warehouse, floor to ceiling, uh, just industrial looking, but they have, they have like millions of yards of fabric there. It's kind of just a crazy place that you just have to go every once in a while if you live in town here. In, in Minneapolis. It's just right out of Minneapolis. And so I went there with some friends and I got six, six sparkly fat quarters there. That's where I got, got my, um, my main part of the fabric. And then the, the border is fabric that I had. It is, it's from Clothworks, Clothworks Fabrics, and it's from their organic solids collection. I have it, I have like a lot of it by the bolt. Uh, so, had to, had to use it, haven't, I don't think I, oh, I didn't, I haven't used this green yet, actually. Uh, I got this, I had to take the tape off of the bolt yet. All right, we got that one side all pressed nicely, so let's, let's rotate and let's do this, let's get this other side done yet, tonight. Oh yeah, it's it's cotton quilting fabric. Yep, it is. It's quilting weight cotton. Okay, I'm totally in the wrong spot. This is the side we just did. One more rotation here. There we go. <laughs> now I got it. But yeah, it, it's quilting weight cotton, and uh, I don't know the brands. The the, uh, the the fat quarters did not have any markings on their selvages, so I couldn't. I, I don't know what brands they were, but it is it is quilting weight cotton, so uh, just your typical pattern cotton fabric. That'd be fun to work with some other fabrics, though. I haven't worked too much 
with other fabrics. I did when I was at that store, I did buy some jersey fabric. I want to attempt to make a t-shirt, and I probably should do that before summer. summer's over, right? So I'm going to have to try that some weekend and see how that goes. I want to try and pattern it after, pattern it after a t-shirt I already own. I like to do that whole thing where, you know, you, you take your favorite t-shirt and try and make a pattern from that to make, to make your own t-shirt. So that's, that's kind of my plan. We'll see, see how that works. That'll be an adventure <laughs> for sure. I've not done much garment stuff at all. Definitely a beginner. I did take a class last year for a shirt, but that was, you know, with a full pattern and, you know, we, we went off the pattern and everything. I kind of want to do this without a pattern and just see if I can make it work, I guess. I don't know. Kind of excited for it, though. Just got to squeak it in at some point. Bulky shimmer. Um, shimming along here. And then I'll I'll press the the border flat again like we did on the other side. Which I don't think I did. It seems to be going smoother than last night though, this this pressing, even though we're working with a bigger now. All right, last little bit here. Oh, the, the shirt. I might do the shirt live. I'm a little nervous about that. We'll see how it goes. I, I'll at least, uh, I don't know. If I don't do it just randomly on a whim, then, then I'll do it live. I've not done that before, and I haven't done any research on that either, like how to draft a shirt from, from something that exists already. But it'd be fun. Yeah, I could do that live. Maybe we'll squeeze that in uh, in one of our projects in the middle of our designer series and embroideries and stuff. But yeah, there's this cute shirt that I want to base it on. It doesn't have sleeves. It's not a sleeveless, but instead of cutting full sleeves, you know, having extra fabric just to make a sleeve, they've just cut curves to the shoulder and then put a little, uh, a little cuff on it instead. So instead of sleeves, it just has a tiny cuff. And I don't know, I really like it. <laughs> I think it'd be fun to, to try. I think I, I wouldn't have to deal with sleeves. I would just have to, or like sewing a sleeve onto it, I would just have to sew this cuff to what exists. So I think it, in theory it'd be relatively easy. Relatively meaning that I still don't know what I'm doing with that type of fabric and garment sewing in general. So uh, that will be the not easy part. But yeah, that'd be fun to try. And I'm sure some of you have done garment stuff and I'll be depending on you to help me. <laughs> Just like how, how you guys helped me with this border yesterday. I needed a lot of help yesterday. All right. We are in the last little bit here and it's looking like a quilt. I should almost lean to press the other side again. I mean at this point, uh, before we sandwich it, I'll, I'll press this whole thing again. So I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect right now. I just kind of want to be able to see it and have it pressed so we can measure it and, and all that again. All right, but there we go, guys. That is that. We have a quilt top, a finished quilt top. Isn't that fun to say? Finished quilt top. So all right, I'm going to flip you guys around. We'll try and see this. And I'll take a photo of it all laid out on the ground tonight. And we can see I'll, I'll post it so we can see what it looks like. Ooh, that's bright. Okay, there we go. Hey there, guys. So, all right, let me just stand up. We'll try and take a look at this. Oop, it's a little, oop, it's stuck. Hold on, guys. It's stuck on the ironing board. All right, this is the 
Good God, this is bold. Wait, which way does it go? Well, anyway, here we go. I'll back it up with here. Let's see what the border is. There we go. That's what it'll be like with the borders. I don't know. It's looking, it's definitely a decent, a decent lap size. Yes, it's rich regal. I think that, I, I think that's how the colors look too, Linda, especially with all those sparkles and that weird little scrolly, scrolly fabric. Uh, it, it does, it does have that kind of richness to it, which is kind of fun. Oh, and the green is just like an emerald, pretty emerald color. Uh, so I'll lay this out and take a photo. I'm excited for it. It's definitely lap size, like a small lap size. It feels bigger than a baby. It feels like something that you could sit on the couch with. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I like that size for sure. So yay, quilt top. I'm excited that's done. Uh, clearly I'm saying excited a lot. So <laughs> anyway, thanks again, guys. Uh, I am giving this away, remember? So be sure to sign up if you haven't signed up yet. The link to win it is in the description here. And I'll be announcing the winner once I'm completely done, which will be coming up soon, I think. Uh, we just have to sandwich and quilt it and we'll be done here. Oh, I still have to sew the binding on. There's still a lot of steps yet, but we will be done sooner than later. Uh, and when it's done, I will be announcing the winner over in our craft, the Penguin and Fish Crafters group. So you can join that on Facebook to see who wins and uh, to see if you won. And that will be that. And we'll move on to something new after that. So, all right, guys, thanks again for being here. And I will catch you tomorrow. We will work on the border and the binding. Have a great night, guys. Good night.